All right, hi, this is Judah from SceneForge, and in this video, I'm going to talk about the Timeline Animation System. Now, first and foremost, before we get started, I want to mention that the, Scene, the SceneForge Timeline Animation System is not meant to be a fully featured animation program. It's just not a 3D animation program. But what it is perfect for is previs and blocking out your shots and deciding where things are going to go, how lights are going to move, how characters are going to move, and that's about it. That being said, when we get to the more full-featured virtual production stuff later this year, it will come in handy more with recording camera motion and so on and so forth, as I believe is it later on in this tutorial series. So with that said, let's jump right in. So I have this scene here that I edited quite a bit since uh, the last video, and it kind of is a very basic, very, uh, I guess, paraphrased, for lack of a better word, adaptation of a famous movie scene. So here I have these uh, R2-D2 and C-3PO over here, as well as this TIE fighter flying out of the sky. So if I play this back, you can see the camera's moving, we're pulling focus, rotating our characters, and then the camera pans to the TIE fighter, which then comes out of the ground and flies into the sky. Now again, you'll see the animation is not perfect. That's just because it's not meant to be. You know, it's it's meant to be a rough approximation of what your shot is going to look like when it is actually filmed. Um, that basically is what previs is. So let's get started. So it works on a very basic timeline keyframe system that if you've used any other video editing program or animation program, you're likely familiar with. Basically, each of these little keys represent a bit of information at this certain timestamp. So I know that at 10 seconds, the camera's position and rotation is at this point. So if I select my camera and focus on it, you can see it is over here. And if I move it, you'll see that at 14 and a half seconds, the rotation is over here. So each of these keys represent information at that timestamp. And so when you move between them, you move this little playhead, it'll change those values over the course of the duration between the two. So when you play it back, you can see that our camera here is following that path just like that. There we go. Now we can see the whole timeline. So there are two different types of keyframes, uh, two different types of timeline tracks. There are keyframe tracks, like you see here, or clip tracks that we'll get to in a second. So keyframe tracks are very simple. Basically, um, we can add an animation to an object. I'm actually going to bring in a another R2-D2, and I'm going to scale him down quite a bit. And there we go. It's still way too big for the scene, but for this example, it's totally fine. So here we have, we have our four tracks for the objects that are being animated in the scene. But to add another track, all we have to go to properties of the object and select timeline animation. And you see that, that adds a new track down here for R2. Now there are three buttons, or four buttons really. There's the expand button, which will show more information, which right now we don't have any. We can go left and right and then add a single keyframe. So left and right is exactly what it sounds like. It'll move between the keyframes on the object. And the keyframe button adds a keyframe at the timestamp with the current information. So for example, if I go to one second on the timeline, and I select my R2 uh, timeline track, and I rotate it like this. When I add a keyframe, now you'll see that we added that bit of information at this point. So if I move the, the uh, playhead elsewhere, and I rotate him somewhere else, and I start scrubbing through, it'll always snap to this value. So now if I move to three seconds, and I rotate a different way, and add another keyframe over here, now we have two keyframes to interpolate between. So if I scrub through, it'll move between these two points. Now you'll see some of these look like hourglasses and some of these look like diamonds. That's because that basically indicates the easing that are being applied to that keyframe. So by default, it's set to exponential ease, um, which basically means that it smooths out the rotation. So you see it, it kind of fades in and out. But you can also change it by right-clicking to no ease, which is just a straight linear start and stop animation. In the future, we're actually going to be adding a ton of other easing options, um, including like boomerang and flashing in and out, just things that have you uh, give you a little more creative control. But in this very early beta, we have these two options. So now you see if I scroll through, it rotates. And if I play back, it'll rotate in real time along those values. So I'm actually going to delete this track, and I'm going to delete this object. 
and let's go find our other characters. Where is he? There we go. So you can see I have these keyframes on the timeline, and I added all this information to start and stop moving at these points. Now the camera is the thing that moves the most, or I guess the TIE Fighter, we can jump to that. And you see I kind of switch off between um, different eased keyframes, we get different types of effects. You see it kind of wobbles at first, then it flies up into the sky. And what's interesting is that to create the effect of it going much further than it actually is, I'm actually adjusting the scale as well. So you can see the scale over here is changing to create the effect of force perspective. So at this point is 0.4, I move it over, now it's 0.23. And so that is the very, very basic overview of the way keyframes work. It is the type of thing you kind of have to get the hang of, but again, once you understand the way it works and the way each keyframe stores information, it's pretty simple to get the hang of. Um, of course, you can also adjust the keyframes by just clicking and dragging, and that'll just retime where things are at any given point. And also you can delete a keyframe by just clicking on it, so it highlights, and then just click delete. I think it was actually in front of that one. So you can add a new keyframe, select it, and then click delete. So those are keyframes. Now, the question is, what if you want to take all of this and just move it over slightly? And that is where clip tracks come into play. So if I right click on any keyframe track, so in this case, the TIE, uh, tie Fighter, I'm going to right click, and you, there's a button that says convert to clip track. And what that basically does is takes all these keyframes and combines them into a single clip. Now this clip basically acts as a container for all those keyframes, and it means that you can easily just drag it left and right, and so now you just shift it over the entire animation. Something that's important to note is that key uh, clip tracks do not move when you scrub through them. That is just to prevent you from accidentally making changes. Trust me, it's for your own benefit. But if you press play now, it will properly play the keyframes that are kind of hidden behind it. Something cool, if you want to kind of shift the way the entire animation plays, you can click and drag either end, and it will just retime the entire clip accordingly. And if you want to be um, more, if you want to have more fine control of a clip track, you can just right click again, convert to keyframes, and here you have all the keyframes in the exact points that they would be at. So I'm actually going to add another camera, um, just for an example. So I'm going to do create cameras, free camera, I'm going to put this right here. If I go to shoot mode, and now I'm controlling this camera, which has a really high focal length for the scene. There we go. And I click record. Now, recording with the uh, manual viewfinder like this sometimes creates more keyframes than necessary. Um, it's really meant for more using the handheld camera, but in this example, it works totally fine. So you see, I'm going to click record, and I'm moving my camera around. And what it's doing is it's basically recording keyframes every 0.1 seconds, so we get nice, accurate motion. So here we have this. That. I'm going to click stop recording, and you see it adds by default a clip track. Um, that's because if we actually go behind the scenes and click convert to keyframes, there is a ton of keyframes here. I think I talk about this in uh, the camera video either later on or before, depending on which order you're watching this series. So yes, you can zoom in and out to get a better view of these keyframes, but sometimes there are way too many to work with, so it's just easier to combine all of them into a clip track. So now you can move it left and right, and adjust the timing if you would like to. Um, but of course, this is not the active camera we want to use, so I'm going to delete this and switch back to our proper camera. All right, so now I'm going to talk about adding a little more information to the timeline and animating other properties in addition to the position and rotation. So I'm actually going to delete uh, the animation for these three things just so we have a clean uh, timeline over here. And I'm going to go to my stage mode, find my camera just over here, and click Timeline Animation. So obviously cameras, you can animate cameras uh, through keyframes also. So for this example, I'm going to do that. I'm going to start here convert to keyframe. I'm going to add a keyframe here. 
Then at two seconds, I'm going to have the camera be at this position. Like that. So it works exactly the same way. Now here's the question, what if we want to animate these properties up here, the aperture, focus, distance, and focal length? Well, if you are using a camera object, so different objects have different properties on the timeline as well, you can open this up and you have tracks here for focal length, aperture, and focus distance. Exposure is not available here just because for most cases you usually set the exposure beforehand and we just find that it's not really necessary uh, for animating at this time. Maybe we'll add it in the future. So once we get to over here, I, let's say, want to pull focus from, work, from showing on our dudes over here to focusing on the background. So the way we do that is as follows. First, you select the focus you want to start at. And at the point you want it to start, click this button. And this adds a focus, or a focus distance keyframe at this point, just like any other keyframe button. Now you can move this over to, let's say, four seconds. and change the focus, make this 50, and press it again. So now you have these two keyframes that it'll interpolate between just like any other property. Now, just like uh, clip tracks, you can't scrub through adjusting camera properties just because, again, it has the potential to kind of mess up what you're aiming for. So trust me, it's for your own good. Um, but if I press play now, it will properly adjust the focus distance at this point. And you can do the same thing here for focal length. I'm going to start here. Make sure to set it at the beginning as well. And at this point, I'm going to have it zoom out just like this. So now if I click play, it starts at the right focal length. Then it starts to animate accordingly. So it's pretty simple. Um, at the moment, cameras are the only object that has specific properties like this. But in the future, you can be able to animate basically everything from light color, light temperature, intensity, and even the time of day, um, but that's coming in the future. So with that, that is an overview of timeline animation. It's pretty simple once you get the hang of it, and I'd love to see what you create. Thank you.